David, it's good to see you, man. Thank you Thank for doing you. this today. Appreciate you My taking pleasure. the time. Um, How does it feel to be back at CMA Fest, first of all? It's a bit odd, you know. I feel like it's one of those things where uh, the last couple of years, you, you kind of wonder if it, you're ever going to experience a, another one again. Um, but it it's a, feels a lot like the first one I did, you know, probably 10 or 12 years ago. So um, it's uh, it's nice to see some familiar faces and and uh, we're, we're excited. We're getting ready to play here in a few hours. So we've kind of crammed our whole week into one day, but it's, it's going to be fun. How good is it to be back out playing and doing this again? Because, I mean, I, I know you're a family man and you must have yeah. enjoyed the time with the, with the kids and that, but it must be a huge relief to get back out here. Yeah, I mean, it was, again, it was kind of one of those things where you were like, man, is this ever going to happen again? Um, and but it was nice because I feel like my my kids were at an age where they you know those first couple of years of their life I was gone all the time and they don't really remember that they kind of you know I guess you know four and five and five and a half they were I was home pretty much every day so I got to they they were probably wondering what in the world my dad does for a living does he even have a job um, but um, it has been great you know I don't think that we were ever a a group that took it for granted or didn't appreciate it or weren't grateful for the experience but um man you know you you take something away for that length of, uh, of time um it does i think remind you of just how much of a role it is in your life well it's an exciting week for you you got this new single coming out on friday it's since that carousel and it's it's a very different vibe to the stuff you've been putting out recently. A lot more, sounds a lot more commercial, a lot more sort of radio ready. Um, tell us about the track and where the inspiration came from. Well, it's a song that um, was written, um, oddly enough, the first week of May. So, um, you know, to, to have a song that was written the first week of May and come out the middle of June is probably a rarity but it was uh something that you know like like i said you or like you mentioned you know it's a little bit different than the stuff that i'd put out recently you know i think the the one thing i've i've done this year is really going into co-writing um without any expectations or any you know sort of uh, idea of like what necessarily is going to take place just kind of being open to to whatever and um, I was writing with this, these uh, two people for the first time, Ryan Collins and Grant Vogel, and um, Grant sort of had the beginning of the track sort of mapped out. And it was weird, you know, it's just kind of like the, you 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 hear something like that, and I knew initially, uh, I knew instantly it was something that I, you know could gravitate towards, and it was all about just kind of finding the story, and you know, I just felt like it felt summer, I felt like it felt youthful and reminiscing, and. And so it was just all about trying to figure out a way. You know, there's tons of songs that kind of talk about that that topic, but it was all about trying to find a new way to put a spin on it. And once we finished it and kind of heard the, the finished product of what Grant did, um, it was a matter of just deciding, hey, like, when, how can we release this as soon as possible? And um, and I ended up going in and putting a vocal on it pretty quick and um, I think we had it mastered within 10 days, and here we are. Yeah, to me, it feels like a bit of a throwback to the I'm a Fire record, that sort of easy, yeah, easy exactly. live kind of vibe. Um, yeah. And I know you said you, you're uh, more excited about this than anything you've put out recently. So um, why is that? Does it feel like a return to the Dave Nail of, of old or something? I don't know, maybe a little bit. I think that, you know, I've always, you know, the, the famous question that you get in the music business is always, what's next? You can put out an album tomorrow and like on Saturday, someone will be like, well, so what's next? And it's like, well, I just put out this record. So... Um, I think that I've always had a little issue with that from the standpoint of like I don't really know you know it's it's just sort of always been like where the music takes you and, or whatever inspires you or whatever intrigues you or whatever and um, and so it's just been one of those things where like this song kind of came and I remember calling uh, Grant and Robin that night and I said you know I don't necessarily know that I knew exactly what the next direction was for me but it just feels like fate it feels like something that's just supposed to happen and so um, it's just been it's really been fun to ride the way we've continued to write um, and really made it a, a priority to, to write more and more I think we've yesterday or the day before we just completed our fourth song and they're all just really good and they all kind of feel like this, not necessarily subject matter, but they just, they have a very um, easy, fun feeling to it. So it is a little bit of a, a, you know, right turn, I guess, maybe from where I've been, but 
Uh, I think the circumstances of where we were in the world and where I was in my life kind of dictated to where the, the music was the last three or four years. And maybe it is a return back to the red lights and the nights on fire and those types of songs. And I guess there's no really way of knowing until you kind of see what's next again. You know, people want to know what's next. Yeah, well, I want to touch on the, the Boot Heel projects a little bit as well, because yeah. I, I, I love those projects as Thank well. You. It's very different to the old stuff, but um, very deep, very introspective projects um so that's how much fun you had putting those together and and how maybe the the independence would have, would have helped that as well because i'm guessing if you with the label you maybe wouldn't have been able to do something like that well you know i mean i, I feel like when i was at universal i was always um given a lot of freedom to kind of do whatever it was um that i felt like you know my heart was leading um with with those particular things um you know, when, when I left Universal, I think everybody was always like, well, what's he going to do now? And is he, you know, is he going to just make like records with just a piano and serenade us and all this stuff? And so I think subconsciously a part of me was like, well, if people anticipate that, I got to do the opposite. And so I did a Well Ravens record that was a little left of center and, um, you know, uh, a lot more energy and, and, and um, aggressive and and then um, and I was super proud of that and then coming out of that it was kind of like okay I've scratched that itch what's next and and sort of I tell people that the singer songwriter stuff is sort of like what my core is it's just kind of like what I do if I'm like sitting at home and I'm working by myself and um, that's just kind of like my wheelhouse and um, and when it comes to those types of songs I tend to always reference back to like my life and the experiences I've had and people that I've met over the, the course of my life, whether it's my family, whether it's my kids, whether it's, um, you know, a first love or an old friend and whatever they're going through, it's, it's, uh, it's usually you can trace it back to a specific story from me and my life and my past experiences. So they were super fun. I, I enjoyed having the liberty to be able to do whatever I wanted to do, make it sound however I wanted to sound. But at the end of the day, it was like they were so stripped down and so easy. Um, it was just, it was a lot of fun. And, and I think I was at a point in my life where I was comfortable being that open and honest. Um, some of those songs were about specific memories that were very personal to me, but um, you know, I, I was at a point, I guess, in my career where I felt like, you know, hey, I'm able to say this and own it and not be scared if someone's going to come up to me later on in life and be like, hey, man, why'd you write that song about me? <laughs> yeah, well, coming back to the uh, the new single, what's what's your plan in terms of things like country radio? Is there a, Are you going to be rolling it out to radio or is it just a sort of standalone single for fans, really? No, I mean, we're... we're I think our expectations are to to let it reach whoever it wants to reach, you know. Um, Is that where you're at now in terms of your career? You're just happy to sort of keep putting music out there? and Yeah, I mean, I think this particular song, obviously it feels like it's something a little bit bigger, a little grander. Um, and, you know, I think a lot of times the, the songs kind of dictate that, um, you know, where where your instincts are as far as, like, you know, let them go. And, and when I, you know, when I played this for people initially, I just said, Hey, you know, let's don't automatically assume like, let's do this or let's, you know, market it here, or promote it here. I said, let's just let, let's like try to get it on as many ears and, and have as many eyes on it as possible. And then, you know, the good Lord will take, take it from there and it'll do what it's supposed to do. And I just feel like, you know, if we can do that, I, I believe in the song enough that it'll take care of itself. Very cool. And uh, coming on to the live shows now, obviously you got the, the show at the, the Dr. Pepper stage today. Um, you must be looking forward to playing the new single live, first of all. First time ever. I'm a little nervous about it. Um, I'll definitely have the lyrics there somewhere <laughs> hidden, hopefully hidden, hoping that I don't um, have any flows. But, um, yeah, we rehearsed it for – we had a really long sound check last weekend in Pittsburgh, so we weren't able to – work on it as much as I would have liked, but I committed to debuting it, and um, and so we're going to do it. We're going to do it tonight, and, and, and hopefully it goes well. What does a David Nell set list usually consist of now? Because you've got such a sort of broad range of material now. But... Yeah, you know, it, it, um, you know, I feel like for this particular, you know, CMA Music Fest, it'll obviously be the hits the and then stuff, Sunset yeah. Carousel. Um, but you know I've, I've tried you know 30 minutes hard to really bridge the gap from the beginning to like now but 
Um, I'm trying to my best to do that. Um, but you know, as far as our normal live show, we just we just uh, try to play a little bit from every album and try to take them on a journey. You know, and it's uh, you know I, we had a show in Chicago recently. It was a really special show for us, and I I was I really wanted to kind of start with like. I'm about to come alive and, and work through every song we'd ever released in order. Um, but there would have been a, you know several moments where we'd have probably put some people to sleep or sent them to the bathroom. <laughs> so I was like, you know, we'll we'll try to, you know, start it up with, with some energy and let it ebb and flow a little bit. Um, at the end of the day, we just want it to be about the music first and foremost, and and hopefully we can introduce some people to some songs maybe they haven't heard of. Uh, get them there with the hits and hopefully introduce them to some newer stuff or some older stuff that they maybe they didn't buy the whole record or whatever and just try to continue to spread the word you know obviously there's a lot of people that haven't heard what we've done they may know Red Light they may not know David Nell saying that and just try to connect the two as much as possible yeah well I saw your post recently about Send a Million Dreams and you're saying how much that song meant to you and it's one of my personal favorite yeah. songs of all time um, do you enjoy sort of throwing those sort of songs in as well even though you you know they are the slow moments in the that, set that, that particular song was a very difficult one because you know it didn't get um uh, I guess it's it, the shine that I felt like it, it could have and should have. Um, and so there were, you know, a couple of years where we, I didn't play it at all just because it was, it would just piss me off. You know, it would just, it was, and it was really difficult to sing from a technical standpoint and just emotionally, you know, it was, uh, I had put so much into that song and recording it and making it my own and, and it meant so much to me and it was such a monumental moment. Um, when I first heard it and decided to record it and so uh, but I was having a conversation with my wife one day and I just said hey babe like we played Dreams last night and she goes what do you mean you don't play it all the time I was like no and she goes babe you should like if you have to sing for anything you should sing that song I agree like you should sing that song like if somebody allows you to sing two songs it should be one of them <laughs> like you should and um, and, and it just kind of floored me and I was like man okay and so we started singing it and we sing it almost every night now and um and somebody told me the other day they're like you know there there have been songs that have kind of come back around and had second lives and and so maybe that'll that'll be the case but if nothing more um you know, just introducing people to that song for the first time is is a treat. I'll keep playing it, man, because it means a lot to a lot Thank of people, you. including myself. So Thank you. Know, keep going with it. But uh, just finally, I got to touch on the UK as well because you you came to CCC all those years ago. It feels like <clears throat> such a long time ago now. But um, we we would love to have you back in the UK, and I say this on behalf of many many fans over there. So, would you like to come back and? Oh and my see God, us? man! You don't have to twist my arm. I mean, it was such a wonderful experience as someone who grew up in a super small town in southeast Missouri I mean you know to make the decision at 17 years old to move to Nashville to be a singer like I never in a million years would have ever thought that that decision would have led me to to, to go to England and sing songs that I'd written you know some of them in my little empty four bedroom apartment so um, it was just a eye-opening experience and um, I was on cloud nine the whole time I mean I was I was in a huge Gordon Ramsay fan at the time, and so I just felt like I had to go to every Gordon Ramsay restaurant. I don't know if that's like cool over there or not, but I was totally like fanboy. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was like the classic, like, hey, you're there for three and a half days, and I was just like running around like a tourist and going to pubs and different places, and um, it was it was unbelievable. I've, my wife's never been to England. Uh, I have, I've never been to Italy, my wife has, and so we're like going back and forth about who's going to win to take who there for the first time, so I need to be invited back so that I can say, hey, I win, you have to come yeah. right now. Well, you're welcome anytime for me, David, but hopefully we can uh, get you to a festival or yeah, a tour or something at some point soon, but uh, thank you so much for doing this today, I appreciate you uh, taking anytime. the time, and uh, yeah, best of luck with the new single. Thank you so much.